Hello YouTube, this is Douglas. Grab your popcorn, because today I've got something incredible to show you. Path traced lighting in my voxel engine. The holy grail of computer graphics. Implementing this new feature has allowed me to take my game's visuals to the next level. But implementing it has been a long and challenging process, so join me as I share my coding journey. First things first, what is a voxel engine and what is path tracing? The voxel engine is a video game project that I've been working on for two and a half years now. The goal is to create a world made of cubes like Minecraft, but at a much, much smaller scale, giving players almost unlimited freedom and creativity. Path tracing is one of the most accurate techniques for indirect lighting in computer graphics. It can be used to simulate a variety of effects and create realistic looking scenes like this one. In my engine in particular, I use path tracing to simulate ambient occlusion, the shadows in the crevices between objects, and emissive lighting, lighting directly from one voxel to another. It works by using randomness to approximate the amount of light at every point in the scene. Specifically, the goal is to compute or approximate the rendering equation, which is a fancy bit of math, but basically what it says is that the light you see coming from any point in a scene is equivalent to the average over a hemisphere around the point of all of the light coming into that point. There's some other stuff in the equation too, mainly to do with how the material you're looking at reflects lighting from different angles, but the important thing is that this is a Monte Carlo technique. It's impossible to compute the average over a hemisphere since a hemisphere has an infinite number of points. What we do instead is we pick a couple of directions randomly. We compute their lighting values and then we take their average to be the result. There's a great page on this website, Scratch-a-Pixel, that explains the rendering equation and how to do pure path tracing in more detail, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. Armed with all that knowledge, I began to implement a path tracer in my engine. The first step was to choose an incoming radiance function. The fun part about this is that the radiance function can be basically whatever you want. There are, of course, physically correct ways to do it, but I was feeling a bit more artistic and so I just made one up. Generally when you're choosing a radiance function, you want it to be brighter in whatever directions light is coming from, and darker in any directions where there are surfaces or nearby dark objects that might occlude things. This was the function that I came up with. To figure out the radiance coming from any given direction, I first cast a ray into the scene using the ray marching technology I developed in my last two videos. If the ray manages to reach the sky, then the output of the radiance function is a fixed sky color, which is set as a constant in advance. If instead the ray hits an object, I return an ambient color, but the ambient color is multiplied by an exponential decay, which makes objects that are very close together darker. This allows me to simulate ambient occlusion I added the ability to generate random vectors in my engine and made it take one Monte Carlo sample per pixel. And already, um, in just a day or two, this was looking pretty good. You can see the scene here. Outdoors, everything is nice and bright, but if I go into a building, things get much, much darker. This is a big improvement over what I had before, because before, the amount of brightness in a shadow outside and inside were exactly the same and that meant that the insides of buildings and whatnot looked very bright and relatively flat and uninteresting. It was at this point that I realized something really cool, which was that I could simulate emissive voxels almost for free. All I had to do was add a third condition to my radiance function. So what I did was I went back and I just added one third if statement, which was if the ray hits something, but what it hit was a voxel that emits light, Instead of returning that attenuated ambient term, instead what I do is I return the color of that light. And with just this simple three or four line change, I had area lighting working fully in my engine. You can see that here, when I place a couple of light sources, the inside of this very dark building lights up. Really cool. The best part about all this is that unlike traditional rasterization techniques, 
Emissive lighting is completely free, there's no extra cost. Before we continue, I'd like to share another resource for learning to build complicated applications like my Voxel Engine. The sponsor of today's video, CodeCrafters, is an online platform where you can learn to build software like Docker, Git, or SQLite. CodeCrafters guides you through a project in a modular fashion. With Git integration, your code is tested on CodeCrafters servers for every change you make, and new projects to try are being added all of the time. If you want to become a better developer, use the link in the description to get started for free today. You've probably noticed a big problem with the images that I've been showing, and I'm not sure exactly how YouTube's compression is going to handle this, but at least on my end it looks like someone threw a big bucket of sand over the image or something. There's a bunch of static looking noise. And this is just coming from the fact that we're not taking enough random samples. This issue is something that pretty much all path tracers have to deal with, and the options for doing so are either to take more samples, which wouldn't work for me because I'm trying to do this in real time, and casting extra rays for more samples is expensive, reducing variance with important sampling, and lastly, but most importantly, denoising, which means basically applying some kind of screen space filter to the image to get rid of all the grainy ugliness and make everything nice and smooth. There are conventional known approaches for triangle ray tracers, but I decided to avoid those initially, mainly because I wasn't sure how I could apply them while still retaining the per voxel lighting look, where every single voxel has just one color that I am trying to achieve. I needed to try something radical, a completely different approach, and so I decided to try implementing a per voxel hash map for accumulating lighting on the GPU. The idea went something like this. I wanted per voxel lighting, so I needed a way to average the light over each voxel's surface. As such, at the beginning of the frame, I would figure out which voxels in the scene were visible and add them to a hash map. Then I would run the path traced lighting calculations like before. But at the end of the path traced lighting calculations, each pixel in the output texture would figure out the voxel that it covered. Then, the pixel would take its lighting value and add that to the voxel's average in the per voxel hash map. In a final pass, then, I would take the unlit color output from the first primary pass, and I would take the lighting values that had been averaged per voxel from the per voxel hash map and combine them to form a final output image. Implementing the hash map on the GPU was a unique experience for me. I had a lot of fun figuring out all of the atomic compare exchanges. It took a while, but I was able to work out all of the bugs, and the results were nothing short of incredible. In addition to eliminating the majority of the noise, the per voxel hash map had other benefits. For one, I was able to implement a form of temporal denoising. This means that I reused the results from the previous frame's hash map in the current frame, essentially averaging lighting over multiple frames to increase stability. Another thing I was able to do was optimize my direct lighting calculations. Previously, to figure out whether a voxel was in shadow or in sunlight, I would cast a ray for, for every pixel from um, the associated voxel to the sun. But this was wasteful because if a voxel covered multiple pixels, all of those pixels would be doing the exact same ray tracing calculation. Now that I was accumulating a list of all of the visible voxels in the per voxel hash map, I was able to reduce this to just casting one ray per voxel in a separate shader. And this actually saves one to two milliseconds on my NVIDIA 1660 Ti, even with path tracing turned off, just the direct lighting calculations alone, the hash map has a benefit. There was still some remaining flickering when you got far away, because the voxels would get small enough that averaging over them wouldn't have very many samples to work with. And so to get rid of this, I settled on using a conventional ray tracing technology called Atrus Wavelet Filtering. And the way this works ends up being pretty simple. The idea is basically before taking the output of the path traced lighting and summing it all up in the per voxel hash map, 
I apply a big blur, but I only blur stuff that's nearby. I don't blur between object boundaries, and this keeps the edges and corners of things looking sharp. There's a whole paper on it, but Atrus just ended up being the finishing touch on my perfect voxel rendering pipeline. Here's the full ray tracing pipeline that I designed. It begins with the beam optimization pass that I talked about in a previous video. The scene is rendered at a lower resolution, so the full resolution primary rays don't have to travel as far. Then, the primary pass occurs where I figure out the unlit colors of each voxel, and I add all of the voxels as keys in the per voxel hash map. Each key slot in the hash map is then initialized by copying the radiance from the previous frame. Then the keys from the previous frame are cleared because they're no longer necessary. Next comes the direct lighting pass, which casts one ray per voxel toward the sun in order to figure out which voxels should be in sun and which voxels should be in shadow. Next, I run an indirect lighting pass at half resolution, where I cast random rays to compute Monte Carlo path tracing. I run four iterations of the Atrus wavelet denoising algorithm on the output image, and then the results from the output image are accumulated into the per voxel hash map. Finally, there's a compositing pass, which takes the color output from the primary pass and the lighting outputs from the direct and indirect lighting passes and combines them to produce a final lit image. That image is then optionally upscaled and anti-aliased in a post-processing shader. There's a new demo of the engine, complete with all of these lighting features, to try out on GitHub now. Before I end the video, I wanted to take a moment to thank you, the audience, in person. My channel is approaching 10,000 subscribers, and I can't tell you how much the support has meant to me. I've been working on this project now for two and a half years, which is like over 10% of my life. <laughs> it's pretty mind boggling. And the progress has been slow at times. It's been hard to keep motivated. Two and a half years is a long time to do anything. But I think we can both agree that the project has come so incredibly far since the first Vulcan Ray Tracer that I wrote or even the rasterization version of the project that has come in between Vulcan and now this. So, I know it's taking a long time, but stick with me. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as I build the best voxel engine that the world has seen yet. Thanks. Thank you.